Hi, I'm Lori Morgan, and you're watching Throwback Country with my buddy, Britt Jones. Ooh. What's up, everybody? This is Britt Jones, and you are tuning in to Throwback Country Music. I am so excited. We have been planning and planning, and it's finally here. December 5th, the debut of the revamped, brand new Throwback Country Music I couldn't be more happier. You know, back in 2018, I started this podcast um, on my own. I wanted to uh, start a show where I could interview country music stars that I grew up listening to, uh, mainly from the 90s. You know, that was my decade, and that's uh, still my favorite decade of country music. And we also uh, expanded it, interviewing uh, country music stars from the 80s. and it's just been, it was, it was such an amazing time. And I, I kept that going for about two years from 2018 to November of 2020. And just recently, you know, earlier this year, I was approached, um, about starting it up again, but this time I would, uh, be, I would have a team behind me and, it was literally just a, uh, it, it was like a neon sign that dropped out of the sky from God. And he's just, you know, I felt like the Lord was saying, go for it. This is uh, your time to uh, do what you love to do. And I've always loved country music. I've always loved singing. I've always loved uh, performing. And I've always enjoyed getting to know the other side of the music business what goes on behind the curtains what what is the process of putting together an album or a cd or a cd back in the 90s or what what's the process you know what's that look like what is it what does it mean to be uh, a touring artist an act who gets on that bus or gets in that van or hops in that truck or car and travels and and plays shows all over the country well the first couple of years, the show did really well. I was able to interview some of my heroes. And uh, you can always go back to the vault anywhere you get your podcast and listen to those shows. I've got interviews with uh, Black Hawk, Diamond Rio, Lil Texas, uh, Lori Morgan. She was our very first interview. Uh, Jamie O'Neill. Let's see, who else did I have? Radney Foster. I had Lulu from Hee Haw. That was fun. Uh, but anyway, it's just been an awesome, awesome experience for me. And now it's even more awesome because I am back at it. I'm working with, uh, my management is with iHeart and, uh, you know, Spotify is our distributor. And we are going to be on, we are on Apple Podcast, uh, Google Podcast, Amazon Podcast. We have our own YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you that want to watch the show, you can also watch it on Spotify. But uh, it's just, it's going to be an amazing ride. And so I thought, since Lori Morgan, Grand Ole Opry member, four-time Female Vocalist of the Year, since she was our first guest back in 2018, why not get her back on for the to be the first guest of this revamped, uh, brand new edition of Throwback Country Music and uh, everything worked out and that's who our first guest is, you know, uh, so, but a few days ago, we went ahead and released our sit down interview with Lori. We had a, uh, opportunity to go to one of her concerts, me and my associate producer, Matt, and we went to one of her concerts just a couple of weeks ago in Gainesville, Georgia. And after the show, what was supposed to be, uh, about eight minutes, just a little, sit down interview we were going to plug her podcast which is called war paint with Lori morgan which is awesome be sure you go get that and subscribe follow wherever you get your podcast hers is also a video podcast as well and that eight minutes turned into over 30 minutes it went so good that uh we decided to do another long form interview just this uh past week 
with Miss Lori, and that was an hour and a half. So we have two hours of content with the uh, Duchess of Country Music, Lori Morgan. And so part one of that, it's out. And if you follow this show, you know that uh, we released one, we released uh, the 30 minute interview, the sit down interview just a few days ago. But today, it's gonna be a little bit deeper this is a two-part interview. You know, she called in uh, last, I think it was last Monday, and we, uh, yeah, it was last Monday, and we, we talked for an hour and a half. And uh, she doesn't hold back. She is not afraid of stepping on toes and, and all that good stuff. But today's episode, you're going to hear some really cool things about Lori. You'll get to see uh, mine and her fun reaction to each other she's a she's a, a jokester just like me and uh you're gonna really really enjoy the things she talks about today and then next week it's gonna be even better um lori has a brand new book coming out in 2024 later on in 2024 we talk about that a little bit you know it's gonna be a book that uh is gonna maybe uh ruffle some feathers in nashville and uh it should but lori morgan is awesome she had so many great songs uh hit songs uh back in the 90s and uh something in red watch me except for monday good as i was to you that was a good one um but yeah so i can't wait for you to to check all that out matt our producer is also uh, he's he's with us at every in every show and uh matt what did you think i'm gonna bring matt into the studio what do you think of your first interactions with uh the duchess of country music Lori morgan i just can't get over how real she is you know she's just a straight shooter she's just awesome she's just so awesome to be around so kind so sweet uh she's just an amazing woman i agree and she's beautiful oh yeah by she's far still beautiful i mean she is you know just lori me and her were talking about how uh she was she was known as a uh country music icon of the 90s uh with fashion she was a uh a lot of people consider her a sex symbol of country music she was always ahead of the game uh it's really cool because today's episode, you will get to hear her talk about the Lori cut. You know, I remember back uh, during that time when she was red hot on the radio, uh, a bunch of women wanted that uh, that style of haircut, the, the short hair uh, that Lori had come up with or had done. And uh, she tells you, she tells us on the podcast today how that even came about, which is a very interesting story. And it's, it's kind of happened just kind of uh, on a whim. Uh, but it's really neat to hear her talk about that. So my hope and my, my, my dream come true, actually it has started coming true, but my hope for this show is that you all will um, see my heart behind the reason I do this show, and that's to basically just give a platform and a, a space for these artists to come on and to share their uh what they're doing now because these artists guys they are still on the road they still travel they still make records just because radio uh country radio doesn't won't play them anymore uh which is a shame but and they should compared to a lot of the stuff we hear today on the radio but uh you know it's a uh, I, I want everyone to see that these these guys and these girls these uh these men and women these performers that are icons of 80s and 90s country they're still going at it and they're still going strong you know me and matt we've been to so many concerts over the past two months since this podcast has started and you know we've been doing a lot of prep work and a lot of uh uh time we, we put in a lot of time at a lot of these shows doing some uh, really cool backstage segments that will be or that are some of them are on our youtube and facebook page but 
it's it's been really cool, Matt, to see all of these concerts and see all of these crowds, the crowds that still come out uh, to see these guys and the '90s artists, especially that we've been seeing. Who have we seen so far? Shenandoah, Diamond Rio. We went and seen Diamond Rio. Mark Chestnut. Mark Chestnut. Uh, Joe D. Joe D. Messina. Lori Morgan. Um, last night we saw the Oak Ridge Boys. You know they're you know they they date before the '90s, of course. But uh, we what we are finding and what we are seeing is that uh, these artists are still packing out three thousand seat venues. Uh, you know they are still going strong, and uh, it's the '90s, '80s country it's still it's on the rise man in a big way and it's still it's it's a resurgence it's a re, it's a uh they have been it's a revival they've been revived again and so they're like they're they're hitting it hard man and these artists are bringing in all all ages you know i saw a lot of college students singing at diamond rio and shenandoah and jody uh but it's awesome because this music to me is timeless uh, these songs are timeless. The song writers that, uh, I mean, the, the way that these songs were crafted back in those days, uh, you just don't hear that much anymore. Uh, but every once in a while you will from like the, the young man we met last night who we absolutely just adored. He's awesome. His name is Cameron Wrinkle and you can, uh, He's from Texas. He opened up for the Oak Ridge Boys, 26 years old. He signed with uh, William Morris Agency, and uh, we just hit it off. He was so cool. That's actually the hat that I, I don't know if y'all can see it. Can you see that, Matt? Yep, I can see it. The hat, yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, yeah. that's Cameron's hat. Um, but I really enjoyed his, his, uh, his, set last night because he's a great storyteller and he's uh kind of reminds me of that 80s and 90s uh country where i mean just such a cool traditional deep awesome voice and he has some really cool connections with like mark chestnut tracy bird and um uh, uh and being from texas you know and so that was really cool to connect with him we're going to try to get him on the show in the next couple of weeks but uh anyway without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and quit talking uh and we're gonna let you uh check out miss Lori morgan um i consider her a friend now and if you listen to the first episode or watched it especially you you see how me and her were aggravating each other and um and all that she's she's hilarious and so without there's my dog tank say hey tank He's laying down. You can probably hear him. Uh, but anyway, here it is. Uh, let us know what you think about it because this is a great uh, interview, especially for those of you that love uh, 80s and 90s country. I mean, she's a she's country music royalty. Her father was George Morgan. Um, of course, her late husband, uh, the country music hall of famer, Keith Whitley. And uh, her son, Jesse Keith Whitley, is, is blazing his own trail. And, of course, she also has a daughter, Morgan, who has um, a wonderful life as well. And so we're just excited that uh, Lori gave us this, this time. So she calls us in. She calls in from her house there in Nash, Vegas, and um, it's just so much fun. So if you're listening to this, that's awesome. But if you have a chance to go watch it, go to youtube.com forward slash at Throwback Country Music. You can also go to our Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Throwback Country Music. Go to Instagram. Uh, that is at Brit Jones Music. That's me, but that's also the official Throwback Country Music podcast uh, Instagram. And that's B-R-I-T-J-O-N-E-S-M-U-S-I-C. Brit Jones Music. Sounds like a Disney thing, doesn't it? uh m-u-s-i-c but anyway uh so go check out of our, our social media we have a we're starting a TikTok. it's it's up but there's you know not much content on there yet uh so i have uh i'm getting some help with that because i'm not big on 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 tick um but you know i was told that we need to get one so we got one that's at throwback country music as well 
Did I miss any socials? Let's see. Nope. But the website is throwbackcountrymusic.com. And you can also go to lori.com. And lori.com is Lori Morgan's website. And you can get more information about her upcoming schedule. Her 2024 is going to be very busy. She's on her Ruby anniversary tour, celebrating so many years and decades in the country music business. And she is Grendel Opry member, like I said before. I hope she becomes a Hall of Fame member as well. But uh, you're going to enjoy this. So let us know how you, if you, what you thought about the show. And uh, yeah, follow us, hit subscribe, like, share, comment, do all the things that you're supposed to do for podcasts. Uh, the more uh, followers and the more likes, the more you know traction we get with our shows, the more we'll be able to do this and bring you some incredible guests because we have a lot of wonderful guests coming up. Um, you know, after you get through listening to this episode or watching it, you can also check out Billy Dean. Billy Dean is also being released today. Uh, so you'll, you'll see, uh, Mr. Billy Dean, incredible singer songwriter from the nineties. He had so many wonderful hits that I believe you may have forgotten. And so, uh, of course, Billy, the kid somewhere in my broken heart, let them be little. Um, he's, he's such a cool cat. One of my heroes, especially, but we'll talk about that later. So thank you so much for following the podcast. Uh, all you have to do is hit that follow button wherever you get your podcast. And if you go to YouTube, of course, hit subscribe. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this episode. Stick around after me and Lori talk, and I will share just a couple more things. All right, here we go. Old. Where's Pudding? You want to see? Uh, oh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that sweet girl. Good Hi, Lord. Honey. How are you? Oh, are you talking? I'm gonna. Pudding? Can no? Can you talk? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, you sound great. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh shoot, I'm gonna put my glasses on because I can't see you. Okay. Now I can see you. There you go. There you go. Um, what are we talking about? Oh my goodness, Lori. Well, Claire sent me some good stuff to talk about, and um, we're gonna. She's a pretty. She's pretty smart, Cookie. Oh man, I really like her a lot. I have yeah, really, me too. Mm, I'm telling you, she is she is so sweet and, and so she's funny. Perf yes, funny and just she just went above and beyond. You know, got me uh, Daphne's number for Jesse, and um, I was able to get a hold of her. And he's going to come on. I hope sometime in the next couple of weeks. I'll, you tell me what day you want him. I'll get him there. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I will. Did Claire tell you I just finished. We just finished putting up our Christmas tree. No, she did not. I mean, like, I had fifteen minutes to get ready. I oh. was, I was doing the tree, and I said, oh, "It's two forty-five. Oh my god!" So I had to run in and get a little makeup on, and my you husband came it? out. And, did I finish my makeup? No, you're. <laughs> no, <laughs> did you yes. finish? <laughs> yes, I finished it. I finished it. God, I'll, Lord. Show, you, I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, I, I can't quit laughing. Look what I brought. <gasps> mm -hmm. Should I get me some? Well, I thought you had to be somewhere in a, a little bit. I do, but I don't have to drive. Oh, okay. Well, good. Yeah, go get you some. Okay, hold on. Let me see if my husband will bring me some. The dog. Hey, Randy. Randy. Can you bring me a glass of wine? He's taking pictures of the Christmas tree. Is it uh, real or artificial? No, it's, it's, artif it's artificial, but it's like 12 feet tall. Oh, I like gosh. the real tall trees. And uh, can you bring me a glass of wine, honey? I'm supposed to have happy hour. <laughs> what an excuse, right? Yeah. Um, but I used to get the uh, flocked artificial ones every year. Mm. And I love it, it started really getting to my throat. Mm. So this year, uh, and I just spray a little now on the, on the trees where it looks like it's got a dusting on it. Oh, yeah. But it gets in my throat. So I had to mm. wear uh, like a COVID mask decorating oh the tree today uh, yeah so oh, wow 
yeah, it was real sexy look, you know. Well, you know, that's, um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's Lori Morgan for you. you. That's, yeah, that's COVID, oh, COVID Lori Morgan. What did I, uh, we will get started. What did I start with? Our, I thought uh, we were starting. Oh, we are. Countdown. Oh, I thought we started. <laughs> well, I, I got it going, but I was like, I'll just edit all this out because I wanted to wait for your wine. Oh, we can. But you know what? We can, We're real. This is real. This is real. You That's know, right. this is a real, real thing. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. I saw a, a picture. Now, who posted this? Maybe it was you. It was um, you. Who was the guy? Well, shoot. Burt Reynolds. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. the one. Did you post it? Uh, I, well, a fan sent it to me, posted it, oh, and man. I reposted it. Did you remember that and, night? Oh, what? How can you forget a night with uh, Burt yeah. Reynolds? <laughs> that was, I, that was uh, a great picture, too. It was me and Tanya mm -hmm. and Kathy Matea mm. and Dolly Parton. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you, Randy. He said, he said thank you, Randy. You're welcome, sir. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. It was Tanya, me, Kathy Matea, and Dolly Parton. Yeah. What year do you think that was? Oh, my God. 90. It was 90s, wasn't it? Yeah, late 90s. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I had just got that short haircut and... uh yeah, it was in the 90s, I guess, yes. I think it was called In the Round or oh. The Round Table or something with Burt oh. Reynolds. And we had these okay. big posters. He had these giant size, like window size posters of all us girls made. And I kept mine, and I would put it on every big house I moved into, be the biggest picture on the yeah. wall. And, and then... I don't know what happened to it. One day we moved and I got to where I was going. It was, it's gone. You're kidding. Now, how would that just disappear? Mm -mm -mm. There's so many things I've had that just disappear. Um, <laughs> my mind is disappearing sometimes, I tell you. Um, I remember that from the last interview. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. God, I, that was the most fun. <clears throat> it was a fun interview. Yeah, yeah. I like you, I like off the cuff stuff, you know. Me too. Were well, you about to get some off the cuff stuff? Okay, go for it. Yeah. Um. Well, speaking of the short haircut, that to me, you know, me being such a '90s country music historian, I'm, I'm self-proclaimed, by the way. Um, I don't. Really you still what? I'm self-proclaimed a uh, historian of '90s country. No Good. one's giving me that, but I, I I like to think I have a little cred. But uh, <laughs> your the the short haircut I feel like became Lori Morgan, or not became. You know, it is Pete. That's damn. It many... did. It became. It kind of became my signature. And I tell you, I was, you know, I <laughs> I um uh, was signed with RCA. Mm -hmm. and they signed me with the big hair, um, and then mm, sometime. During one of our my meetings with RCA, Joe Galani um, actually said, "You got to do something about your hair." And I what? said, "What?" And I was wearing these those banana clips, you know, with the big poof, yeah. poofy hair. Yeah. He said yeah. it just dates you. It makes you look out of out of style. So he called the stylist in the day before I was to do my uh, "We Both Walk" video, mm. and. I went in and she cut my hair and blew it dry. And I was thinking, where's the, where's she going to poof it up at? And that was it. And I went in on camera the next day with that brand new haircut. And uh, it just kind of became my signature thing. And so I went to, uh, I was in London mm. and um, somebody some somebody on the street or some I was walking and somebody said, Oh, I recognize you from your short hair. You're Lori Morgan. Oh. So I went 
hotel room and I got my banana clip that I used to wear with the long hair. Yeah. And I FedExed it. I don't know if it was FedEx back then or not to Joe Galani at RCA. And for a long time, I said, and I said, thank you for making me take my hair out. And uh, for a long time, it sat on the big RCA dog, you know, the big plastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In his office, my hair piece was his hair, was the dog's hair. So uh, that kind of started it. Wow, and then, that's uh, cool. Yeah. So he's responsible for that and a lot of other great things that have happened to me. Um, was he in a and at that time? He was the CEO. CEO. Oh, he was the, the head honcho. He was, he was the... Uh-huh. He was the honcho, head uh, honcho. Speaking of, we both walk. I got a question about that. Hey, what's behind your head? Oh, the moon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 fake. You just mooned me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, oh, you're awesome. Um, what was I asking you? Oh, we both walk. Um. So the past three times I've seen you in concert before, you know, we became such good buddies. <laughs> yeah. Um, see, Hiawassee, I saw you in Hiawassee, Georgia twice. And then once at um, you and Pam somewhere in South Georgia. But um, I haven't heard, do you not do We Both Walk? I do. Oh, you do? You okay? Uh, You know, when I do it is when, like, we have outdoor shows Mm -hmm. and it's more of a of a up tempo kind of crowd. Yeah. Um, we throw that in because most of my shows that I do are intimate shows, kind of one on one. I can't get me straight in the camera. Uh, they're kind of one on one. Uh, you know, me like you're sitting in my living room and we kind of talk and, you know, so. It's kind of a more laid back show. So when we do outdoor shows or festivals yeah. and we do mostly up tempo stuff, we still gotcha. do. And the band loves to do when we, uh, we both walk. I They're can like, imagine. Every, every week for the Opry, when we do the Opry, they go, can we do We Both Walk? We Both Walk. And I'm like, okay. It's a hard song to sing the older you get. Well, I, yeah. And I, I could see that because I, um, it was probably three, about three years ago. Maybe it was, yeah, it was during COVID. So, um, I was going back listening to some old, um, cassettes and, <laughs> um, <laughs> but we both walk. I, I, for some reason I had it on like, I mean, I was probably two when it came out, but, uh, <gasps> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <sighs> I'm playing. Um, but what year did it come out? 87, 88? No, it, uh, Keith had already passed away when it okay. came out. <clears throat> so it was on, uh, we both walk was, I think it was, well, Keith had already passed away. And I remember when the video came out, um, I was on tour with Clint Black and Merle Haggard. Oh my gosh, what a tour. And I, uh, and I took the video, it was on VHS, you know, and I took the video to Clint's bus and said, you got to see my new video. And he laughed at it and called me Peter Pan. Why? Oh, because of the, what you were wearing? Because of my hair. Short oh, like Peter Pan. Oh, shh. 91. Was it 91? Mm-hmm, 91. Okay. And uh, let's see, it reached number three on the Billboard Hot Country Singles and tracks. Oh, it was from something in Red Album. Yeah, it was from the Something in Red album. See, I was associating that with uh, that the same time zone of like uh, five minutes the, and, and all that. Leave so, the light on. The Leave the Light yeah. on album. Okay. Yeah, that was that was my first album. My second right. album was Something in Red. And what is the B side? Faithfully, I just you covered. There's, faithfully? There was a single. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ninety one. We had there was no. There, I mean, they had the forty fives. Well, it says we both walk uh, B side. Faithfully, yeah, March thirteenth, ninety one. That you yeah. did, you wow. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did a cover of that, and I used to close my shows with that. Matter of fact, that's the name of my book um, that I had out called "Forever Years Faithfully" about Keith 
um, kind of a biography, kind of, of what, how I met Keith, what went down, the, the tragedy, kind mm-hmm. of, of, of the love story. And um, so I, I started, actually, Keith played me that song a long time ago. We were coming back from Sandy Hook, Kentucky, and he pulled the car over. And he said, I always want you to think about me when you hear this song. And that's the first time I'd heard it. And it was by Journey. And, uh, oh, he loved that song. And so I ended up doing a cover on it and naming the, the song, I mean, the book, uh, Forever Yours Faithfully. Oh, my gosh. So you've already you've already got a book under your belt. I have one under my belt. Because you're, 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 you're working on one for next year, right? I'm working on one. I, you know what? It is so hard to talk about people that are still alive. I know, but you got to. Oh, you got to. <laughs> I mean. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. It's I got some, I got some shockers in there. So already. Oh yeah, Claire's oh. got. Claire's been editing it, and uh, I've already started it. It's it's um about halfway through, but I got mm-hmm. I got most of it done. I went down to Florida by myself for about three days and I just sat and looked at the ocean and wrote down hand wrote everything I could think of and every situation I was in so some of it was scattered and Mm. you know back and forth and so I brought it home to Claire and she started uh, doing some editing on it and telling me um, some of the stories I need to put in there and um, you know from from stories she and I have talked about so Anyway, um, long story short, uh, the the book the book is about halfway done. That's going to be all. I told you the other night it's going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see. The and movie. it's going to be called for real though. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> For real, for real, for real though. For real though. <laughs> oh, um, are you man? I got so many questions about that now. So. I need to go back and read the actual, the first book. Yeah, you might know me a little better. Well, I feel like, um, yeah, because I know you from just watching My Night to Howl. <laughs> That's the moon from My Night to Howl back there. Woo. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it is. So, yeah, I did that. On oh, purpose. my God, there's a pink towel hanging back here behind me. From the pool? Yes. Well, the dogs go out and they run across the water on top of the pool the cover of the pool oh my they better be careful well uh, is it... there's only one dog that'll go running across it pudding just oh, kind of pudding. Okay. pudding swims when it and now she looks at me like um there's something on the pool um <laughs> if you could get it off I, i'll go swimming but little may is scared to death of water so she's happy that there's a cover on it <laughs> Excuse me, and she runs back and forth on it all day long. What's so. little, what is little May? I don't. Which dog is that? Uh, little, little May is an. Uh, we adopted her, oh, and nice. she was supposed to be part pit bull. Mm. And um, I have no idea what she is. She is. She, I call her a kitty cat because she sits and licks her paws, and she does. You know how c- cats curl and they flip around and. Yeah. She likes to chase bugs and birds, and <laughs> she's just a, a funny little dog. She looks like a Basenji with a pit bull oh. tail, oh. and and she's hilarious, and she's got these tall ears that she looks like a little kangaroo, and so we sent, you know those, um, you know those um, DNA tests you can send away to find out what kind of uh, breed your dog is yes you did okay that? yeah it's about two hundred dollars but did it and uh here's what came back <laughs> now she's she's 30 maybe 30 pounds now a little brown and white a little brindle in her mm-hmm. she looks like caramel that's kind of the color oh, of yeah. her and a little pink nose perfect little mouth i mean she's just perfect and um but she's crazy So the test comes back, and the first thing on the test was part German Shepherd, which I'm thinking, 
okay, I can see the little britches on the back of her legs kind of thing. Part pit bull. Part something else. And here's the the best one. Part St. Bernard. What? This dog has no more got any St. Bernard in her than I do. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, your mama got around. <laughs> but uh. there, there's no, and, and she looks like a Basenji. And she's got this little whiny, she does all that like a cat. Like and a I'm cat. like, I don't know. It's really weird. But is she, she attached is, to you or Randy? She's Randy. She's yeah. uh, all, all about Randy. And she's starting to like me. But I'm the one that was my idea to go adopt a dog. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one that went to pick her out. We took Puddin so Puddin could see, you know, who she oh. was comfortable with. Yeah. And she was just a sweet little girl. And and all of a sudden, just she just didn't like me. She was just like, I'd call her and she'd just turn her head away. And it was, it was all about Randy, really. She got jealous. All, all about Randy. Oh. And um, uh, now she's starting to climb up on my lap and, you know, she's starting to like, she's starting to believe that I, you know, bring the treats home. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, You're not drinking any of your wine. I just, I just took a sip and you, okay. you, you didn't see it. All right. But I'm going to again. All right. So, so I'm going to I'm gonna play you something. You want some off, off the cuff? I'm about to play you a little clip of something you said in 2018, October of 2018. You know how I said about the, the other night, blah, blah, blah. I was telling you about the uh, double queen and queen, Loretta, Dolly. You said double yeah. queen. All right. So this is that part of the interview. But listen, I, I, me and my uh, associate producer, Matt, uh, who you met, who Puddin fell in love with. Remember, they were making out while we were trying to talk. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, but we were listening to the an interview that they were making out. <laughs> they were. She was making all those noises. And then she slept <laughs> and snored. It was precious. <laughs> mm, I loved it. Um. And so I'm going to play a clip. Well, anyway, we were listening last night. We were, had a campfire going. We were, you know, I like to listen to old podcasts that I did. And now, 19, 20, 22, 23, so five years, five years. I'm gonna, we, we listened to this last night, and, I, and we both stopped, looked at each other, and said, Oh, shit, this is crazy. Now, there's two parts to this. It's only a minute and a half. All right, I got, all right. I'm fine. But it's going to take us into the next conversation. Just, you know what, but I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't play, I don't play politics very well in this business. And, uh, you know, I am what I am and, and, uh, you know, yeah, no, I'm where I am because I, I was, you know, I was me yeah. and I, so that's how I'm going to stay. Uh, one of my favorite albums that I I had I had I, like I said I, I would buy everybody's album and I was a huge fan of all the female artists in the in the nineties because that was like when y'all all I mean man there were so many of y'all and they were so mm -hmm. good my favorite album I bought of yours though was War Paint and I love War Paint you, oh, Lord yeah. and I I used to re repeat I would have my night to howl on over and over <laughs> and I remember when the video came out you know I was probably what twelve years old and uh, well, I, I loved it, and I loved that album. It was just so different. It uh, was. It was a great album. It was a fun album to make. I was right on the heels of a, you know, uh, or the tiptoes of a huge career right then, and just fun. It was like everything we touched was going to gold, yeah. and it was just fun. We were making videos, and, and uh, you know, I don't know. It was just a different time back then, and, you know, they say you got to accept changes, and I... I mean, I agree. I, I know you got to. I know you have to. But um, I left that up to everybody else. Yeah. I'm going to hang back here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the first part. Now, how crazy. And I'll play the next part in a second. Okay. Okay, right. not only did you start a podcast called War Paint. Yeah. 
in 2018, I told you, because I did, I have the cassette still, the cassette, My Night to Howl. And I looked at Matt and I, we were like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. That's cool how that, you know, you decided to call it War Paint, the uh, podcast. And so right. that brings me to this. You've got your podcast out now. Larry Gatlin's about to drop, I believe. Or has it dropped? The Larry Gatlin episode? I don't know, but when it does, you'll know. <laughs> 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 Woo! That was a I fun interview. I can't wait to hear it. Um, so War Paint. War, so you got it from the song you wrote, and right. the album title was War Paint. War Paint, right? And um, the War Paint. That the thinking back on the song War Paint, and then I'm thinking about this new song that I heard in Gainesville, uh, the uh, Dead uh, Girl Walking. Yeah. Dead girl walking. Damn. It's like, I mean, it's great. Both of yeah. them. And I, I think like, that women power for, I know you like a, you just are such a leader and all that. What are, what are you trying to say in all, in all this dead girl walking? Well, you know, dead girl walking was written by a, a, a friend of mine, Kelly Lang. Um, and she and I, wife? yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 Awesome. Kelly wrote it and Kelly and I wrote a whole album together uh, called I Walk Alone. And it was about, you know, surviving uh, the album. Mm. I, I was going through a divorce with Sammy Kershaw mm -hmm. and uh, she, myself and Mark Oliverius were just, I mean, it was like therapy for me. I, I can't find myself on here, but anyway, it oh, was you, like therapy good. for me um, writing this song. And Kelly would come up with these lines or I would come up with certain lines and be like, oh, my God, I have felt the same way. I have done the same, you know, the same thing. And one night I was at a club watching her do a show mm -hmm. and she started singing Dead Girl Walking. And I'm like, holy shit, I have lived that. I have been that girl. Um, mm. I was that girl in war paint, you know, mm, that's I mean, what I'm saying. I was that girl. I mean, you know, um, we've all, you know, all of us men or women, I mean, we've all been dumped and, and, you know, shat on if you want mm -hmm. to, but, mm -hmm. um, we've all experienced it. But when I heard dead girl walking, I said, I've got to cut that song. Oh my God. And, um, and I cut it. And we call we're calling the new album "Dead Girl Walking," but it fits. It fits you. It does. And you know, at first when I say it, the title, the album, kind of, uh, the people kind of they they kind of giggle, and I'm say, yeah. I tell them, I say, yeah, it's funny until you're that girl that's walking around without oh, yeah. a heart, you know, um, <laughs> because people think you know they're kind of taking it tongue in cheek, but oh, I'm serious about mm -hmm. it. Um, um, I love that song. I loved I it too. from the moment I heard that song. Uh, and that was like probably five years ago, maybe something really? like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you've had, you've had that in your, that you've had that song. Like you've been savoring on that state for I, a while. I have been savoring it for a while. Just like I did dear me. I had uh, mm. dear me in my back pocket for uh, nine years. Before anybody cut it on me. Yep. Nine uh, years. I did the original demo on it. And every time I'd take it to a producer or whatever, mm -hmm. they'd say, yeah, I don't really hear this song for you. And uh, uh, I was like, oh, okay. So finally, you know, teamed up with Barry Beckett, who produced Leave the Light On. Mm -hmm. And I played him the song. And he said, please tell me that you singing that song. And I said, it is. He said, that's Lori Morgan. So, you know, Dear Me is another one of those songs. It's, I mean, I like singing about real heartbreak, heartache, uh, surviving them. Um, you know, my manager was real weird about it. He said, we can't name the album Dead Girl Walking. Because what if, what if it's your last album? And I said, well, it's not going to be my last album. So, uh, our, I think Claire said that too. That's Claire funny. said, so what if it's your last album? And I said, well, it's not going to be. No, definitely not. So, um, 
No. I, I think no. it's a badass title. It is a badass title. And I it, mean, you know, I think everybody who's ever been in love and ever been hurt and um, they can relate to it. And I, I like to do songs that make people, you know, um, feel. Well, yeah, feel. And, you know, sometimes you have to remember the hurt mm. to get past the hurt. It's like, you know, I'm still hurting from things that I, I'm not over. Right. But, and that's why I can sing about them. And that's why I can um, sing songs that are true, that, that I'm living, that I have lived. And if I've lived them, I know there's so many women and men out there no who doubt. just, they they can't write it down like Kelly or or I can or mm-hmm. a Larry Gatlin or you know Mickey Newberry or somebody like that, but I'll tell you what, they sure can feel them. Mm, that sends chills over me right now. You've said you've said I've, I, you you said uh, one time that uh, if you haven't lived the song, if something like if a song gets pitched to you and you didn't write it, if you hadn't lived it. You just you you try you try to stay away from that, but right? I do, I do. You know, because when I was like eighteen, mm-hmm. and they took me in the studio for like the first time on Hickory Records, they were making me sing songs about, you know, divorce and hell. I was. Bar- oh no! Although it was a great attempted try, um. You just that got dropped. Good. What? About the past 30 seconds, it just, it, it dropped you off. I hope everything's still good. I still have the recording. It did. Like you, 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 it won't your be the first time gone. I have been dropped. Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> That's All my right. new song. I've been dropped. <laughs> I've been dropped like Humpty freaking Dumpty. I've been dropped by Vidalia Onion. Ooh. I have, you know what? I dropped the Vidalia onion. I dropped the Vidalia onion. Oh. Mm -mm. Well, no one, unless they just dig, they won't know what we're talking about. But, um, oh, they know. Were you the queen or no? A double wide? No, hell no. (laughs) Hell no. I had a mansion on the lake. Yeah, you did. And he made me sell it. (laughs) <laughs> he put me in, in like a 1,500 square foot little office and said he's going to build me a mansion on our farm. And uh, that never happened. So, no. I was not the queen of a double wide trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Oh, God. Um... You know, but, you know, back then... I, yeah. I, I was in love so much. I I mm-hmm. would have I would have hopped in a double wide, mm-hmm. just like that. Oh, me too. Kid Rock lives in the double wide somewhere in Nashville, or it's very nice. I I bet it is. I bet there's an underground palace under it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, are you a fan? I love Kid Rock. Me too. I um, love him. He and. The past year, I have really fell in love with him because of his, uh, you know, we we believe the same thing. I am scared to talk about it. Oh, no. I ain't either. I've just no. seen what, I've seen if I could push a button. Um, Here, no, not push a button. Ha- have but you ever like, heard his song, Fode? Fode. F-O-A-D. No. Look it up. I Don't look it up now. Don't play it I now. Won't. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm writing it down. F O A D. Okay. Yeah. It, hmm. I went to his listening party when he that album came out. Yeah. It's got the lips on it and the cigarette and hanging out. I think it's pink. And you're gonna call me and you're gonna say, "I love you for introducing me to this." Song. Is it that good? Oh, it's go- oh, okay. No, I, it, I, I think I feel feel you on that. Yeah, you feel me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's the one reason I even brought that up. I was just joking, but the, uh, that, that, the whole viewpoint, because, um, I think, uh, 
I think it's on your, well, I ain't going to share that, but you know, on your non blue check, uh, Facebook page for your, you know, yours, your private one, my personal one. Yeah. What's uh, on I, there? No, I, I, that's why I brought it up because you are you're you're very uh, vocal, vocal and no apologies, which I love. I love. I love. You know, poor poor Pam. <laughs> she has to deal with my oh. uh, <laughs> opinions, and so I think she gets some flack about it. Oh. And geez. she asked me when we started this tour this past year. She said, "Hey, can I ask you a favor?" And I said, "Yeah." She said, "Will you not post everything you think on?" facebook and i said no that's not gonna work no but i love you yeah yeah i said i'll do if i'll do something for you though pam i will tone it down I love and it. so lately i have i got you know i've been in facebook jail like three times and a couple of times i'm like they didn't, I didn't even post anything yeah and and they won't tell you what you posted so i'm like I didn't even post anything, and I, I was I in know. jail. I, I wasn't driving, officer. I swear I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> do the kids, the kids, do your kids ever say, Mom, keep going, don't, don't, don't post no. certain things? Yeah. No, no. That's Jesse's, awesome. Jesse's right there behind me, and Morgan, I figured. Yeah. Morgan is uh, deep in my corner. Mm -hmm. Uh I have, matter of fact, I have to tell Jesse. Jesse might yeah. might need to tone it down a little bit, and I can't even tell you what he says. Oh, I bet. No. Claire cheers. said. Cheers. Cheers. Claire said. Uh, Jesse is like trying to hold Jello still in your <laughs> hands. <laughs> She, she goes I she goes I love that boy. I have been around him for years. He uh I tell you what, he would take a bullet for her and anybody else he cares about. Mm. You mess with his mama mm. or his sister, um aunts, family, period. Mm. I mean, he his wife um he's just he's a redneck, man. Yeah. He is he is a Southern rock, redneck, beer drinking, whiskey drinking, uh, but go to church on Sunday mm -hmm. kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I've listened to, um, I've been listening to some of his stuff, and I, I really hope, I, I know he wants to blaze, his, blaze a trail and blaze his own trail. And He uh, does. I, he, yeah. he, he does. You know, he loves his dad's music. We, you know, all of us. Uh, me and him and Morgan get on the phone a lot and we, mm -hmm. we have cry sessions, you know, about daddy and, you know, listening to s different songs and talking about different things. And, um, but at the same time, he, he's not Keith Whitley. Right. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't think Keith would want him, mm -hmm. you know, to say, you do the same kind of songs I do. Cause it's not in Jesse. It's not, right. you know, that, that, country bluegrass i mean he loves uh -huh. it but he he's gonna he's gonna rock out on stage you know with people the, like struggle Jennings yeah and, and, yeah and jelly roll and mm -hmm. um all his little friends little friends they're big when they yeah. come around me i'm like i am so <laughs> safe right now <laughs> he but he does he 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 has a kick ass uh voice and i i really do i think i i, I i'm pulling for him i think it'd i'm be glad awesome. thank you you yeah. know and i and i tried to tell him i said you know jesse being a member of the opry was my dream right when i was a little girl mm -hmm. i was a country singer period i said it's not for everybody you don't have to be a member of the Opry. Right. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You take, you make your own way, and whatever that way takes you, you'll be successful because you, I did it my way. Well, you ever thought about cutting a whole album of that kind of? Yes, I have. I did. <laughs> I cut an album called Secret Love. Now you're making me feel like I don't know my Lori. You don't. <laughs> All right. So, Lori Morgan. Secret, secret love. Love. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know how much I love that type of music, by the way? You can ask Matt. I've been listening to it by the fire. I have an old Matt, record player. Matt, has he been listening to that? Can you see him? No. Oh, because he's he's in the uh, he's in a, another screen. He can see us. Um, but <laughs> he said, "That's so funny." He can see you, but he we can't see him. Okay. Oh, secret love. Oh, look at that hair. I well, like it. Yeah, it was big hair. Yeah, but I like that though. It's kind of it's got that Meg Ryan vibe. Yeah, I loved Meg Ryan. I think she had the Lori Morgan vibe though. She might have. Yeah. Um, so does it say what songs are on it? Mm-hmm. Fly Me to the Moon. Oh, my gosh, Laura. I can't, how did I not know about this? Did you know I recorded with Frank Sinatra? I've got an original 1950 uh, record. Or what year was it? Oh, shoot. I've, yeah, are you kidding me right now? No. Yes, you are. I promised to Daddy. Oh my oh, God! Man. You need to come Once to my upon house. Once upon a time. So can... Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the album cover. How did I not know? Ninety-eight. Well, that was in the. You were hot shit at that. <laughs> I mean, like I'm. I'm talking about. Well, yeah, beautiful. But you were like, you were still. You you won female vocalist of the year that year. Yeah. And you got, a and you released album. this. Was it and hard for them to agree to let you release this style? You know. That is the style Joe Galani saw me as when he picked out something in red for me. Yeah. He pictured me in that era. Um, you know, spotlight, piano, moody little bar. Oh. Um, that's what he pictured for me. Um, we actually took Secret Love on tour. Um, uh, it was the it was Secret Love tour? Secret Love Tour. We played with a different symphony every night. We had three day, three nights in, in Atlantic City. And um, just, I mean, I had so much luggage on that. that uh, I changed clothes. I think Kenny Ortega choreographed uh, my tour, that tour, and uh, my Greater Need Tour, and my first Christmas tour that we did, Christmas from London. Mm -hmm. But that album, that Secret Love album, I cried every day. Every day I was recording it. We'd sing those songs. They, they'd start the symphony, and I would just say, wait a minute, i got to stop. Oh, and it was dedicated to uh, your father, George Morgan, the legend. Yeah. Yes. I cannot believe this. I, he I, introduced me to that kind of music. You're shit. I mean, you're kidding. I keep saying the S word. <laughs> it's sorry. okay. I don't care. Um, so he entered. That's, see, to me, like, as someone from the outside looking in, I'm like, so the George Morgan introduced you to this style of music. Yeah. He a, well, like... he, lo he was a crooner. My dad oh, was wow. a crooner and I can remember him singing like uh, Dean Martin and he, I hear him in the shower singing like, when the moon hits your eye. I mean, he was, he, he loved Dean Martin, Perry Como, um, John ah. Gary. He, John Gary was my dad's, favorite crooner um, i have a perry como record perry como oh yeah i, lo a, I man, love it lord i didn't oh, wow this like off the record if this wasn't recording i'd let you know this is my this is what makes me um me, me too me i love too. that music i could drink wine chill me have too. a fire going mm. and i do we've got a fire pit right out here mm-hmm and we've got this huge Sonos music system outside. Oh, nice. And we're right on the lake, so I can see the lake right here. And we get the fire going, and we put on that kind of music, the Tony oh Bennett and, uh, you know, Perry Como and Johnny Mathis and all the – Frank I have, a John, I have Johnny Mathis, too. Uh, I recorded with him, too. Lori, you don't have to tell stories. Just I am going to all of mess America's you up. watching. I and Canada. Mess, are you I am good with Canadians? I, I love Canadians. They I are have, all they we I know. have a Canadian band leader for fourteen years. Uh, uh, Todd. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love I love Canada. Uh but we have a lot of listeners in Canada. Well, I, it's a beautiful, beautiful place up there. I'm telling you, I, I wish 
Country music's could, big. I wish we could learn some things from, you know, how clean they keep their country. And yeah. It's just, it's beautiful up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh my God, the poutine. Oh my God. What is that? A poutine? Hey, it's I'll... like it's like fried potatoes with mm. brown gravy on it. Where have I been? That's what I've been trying to find out since we started this freaking interview. <laughs> <laughs> you know, next time you you need to tell, tell Claire. Me, look, did you enjoy that interview with Lori Morgan? I mean, that's that's just the the that's just part of it. I've I've got so much more to share with y'all next Tuesday. December the twelfth. Is that right? I think December. Yeah, December twelfth. Uh, the third part and final part of me and Lori's uh, or Lori and I's conversation comes out next Tuesday. Also next Tuesday, I'm dropping another interview with the voice, the voice of John Barry. Y'all remember John Barry? He had, uh, of course, the number one uh, smash hit. Your love amazes me. He had standing on the edge of goodbye. What's in it for me? Kiss me in the car. John had so many uh, smash singles on Billboard Hot Country in the 90s. He's also a very close friend of mine, him and his wife, Robin. Uh, they sit down with me and uh, I can't wait for you to, to check that out. So I love John. He mentored me. I toured with him. I opened up so many shows with John. It was fun. It was awesome. And so I can't wait for you to hear me and him interact. He is such a cool cat. And I just, I mean, he could sing the pages out of the phone book. And that's, he, he could, he could sing the yellow pages. Uh, but he is such a, a, a incredible vocalist. Even Billy Dean was talking about that as well. But uh, I hope you enjoyed today. Be sure you go check out Lori Morgan's podcast. It's called War Paint. War Paint's a song she wrote, and it came off the album War Paint. And that album also uh, had the single uh, My Night to Howl. And that was one of my favorites. I actually had that album back in the day. And um, it, she is a, uh, she's just, she's an icon. She's a legend. Grand Ole Opera member. What more can you ask for, you know? And that's a, that's a big, big thing right there in and of itself. So, Lori.com, go to her website to see all future dates, how you can purchase tickets, go see her in concert. Her band is phenomenal. Also, you can go to um, throwbackcountrymusic.com. That is our website, and you'll be able to uh, find other links for other things that we do, whether it be social media um, or even our schedule. You know, we, we also do a lot of things on the road. Uh, we do some live remote broadcast and, and all that fun stuff. But thank you so much for hanging out. Please, please, please hit that follow button. Like us, subscribe, whatever you have to do to follow this show. Do it. Please do it. It really does help uh, because we have some incredible guests coming up in the near future. Uh, John Barry. We have um, Mark Miller from Sawyer Brown. Sorry, Brown, one of the hottest, best-selling country music vocal groups uh, from the 90s. And I can't wait to uh, chat with Mark. He's got a new book out, all that good stuff. Sorry, Brown's still on the road touring and, and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So thank you so much for hanging out with us this week. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell all your loved ones. Uh, post our socials, share our, share our, our, our statuses from like Facebook about the shows. Uh, help us to grow, you know, and I, I can't wait uh, to, to just to see who all joins us on this journey because it is a journey. You know, we're it's kind of like we're uh, yeah, we have a cool little deal with uh, some of uh, the, the machine of Spotify and iHeart, but we still have to grow. We still have to to put in our work. And, and part of that is growing our fan base and uh you know, if you have any questions or even comments or, or if you have an idea for a show, uh, someone you want to see from the 80s or 90s being interviewed, uh, please go to our, um, well, you can go to Facebook, you can go to Instagram, or you just go to our website. There's a way to contact us there. You just go to the contact section, put your name in, your email address, boom, 
and uh, give us some ideas. Maybe you are a fan of the first uh, couple of years that we did this back in from 2018 to 2020, and you want to see one of those artists come back on. And we hope to do that. We hope to get a lot of these artists on as well. Now, this coming Thursday, we're dropping two more shows, uh, what we like to call Rising Stars. And we're going to have a guy named Jason Bird. Jason Bird is a singer-songwriter from Florida. He also has some very interesting stories to share. Now, him and Billy Dean have released a uh, new song. Well, not a new song. It's a, actually an old Keith Whitley uh, cut, but it's New Kid in Town for Christmas. Him and Billy Dean uh, cut that here recently, and now it's out on all the streaming platforms, iTunes, and all that good stuff. So be sure you go check that out. It's a great version. Jason is a traditional country singer. He's got a, such an amazing voice. I really enjoyed our time together. So go check out Jason Bird, B-Y-R-D. But his episode drops this Thursday. More information coming with that. Also this Thursday, one of my favorite guests. Actually, she was the first one. She was the first one we interviewed, wasn't it, Matt? Yeah, Allie Colleen. Allie Colleen is a singer-songwriter. She lives in Nashville. Uh, she is a she's just a just so much energy and so much passion drive and determination to really uh make it in this business her father uh cut a or blazed a trail like none other you know to superstardom but ali said if i want to do this i'm going to do it my way and on my own so ali colleen is this thursday and she is she is she is an incredible uh person she's got such a sweet heart sweet spirit about her and she's determined you know and she really is a great writer i've i've listened to some of her stuff already i've actually been listening to uh honest man if you haven't heard that song yet it's go get it now honest man is an incredible song she actually plays it for us uh on the air so you'll get to hear all that thursday ali colleen have a wonderful next few days. Please come back this coming Thursday. Follow the podcast, throwbackcountrymusic.com. Go to lori.com and we'll see you in just a few days. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your afternoon, evening, morning, night, whatever time it is that you're listening to this. Throwback Country Music, I appreciate you. Blasting in my truck And I'm still calling Bad Rouge Shameless It'll never get old I still hear That thunder roll It's where I've been It's made me Who I am Somebody play me Play me those songs Again Tomorrow never comes I wonder what she's doing now I'm much too